everyone. Welcome to another episode of GTV. And today, I'm really excited to have this guy in my show because he's someone that I really follow. No? I get his daily updates. I really read his daily updates on, on what's happening in the crypto world. So yeah, so without further ado, I have Luis Buenaventura with me. Hi, Luis. Hi, Ginger. Good evening. This Good is going to be exciting. I know, yeah, because we have a lot of things to talk about now. But, but what I want to zoom in for this interview is really let's talk about NFTs. Now, it's another okay. abbreviation that a lot of people like wonder what this is about, right? So I know a lot of people are playing Axie Infinity now. It's, it's been picking up and people have been playing it and they hear the term NFT game, no? NFT gaming. Uh, but let's focus on NFT first. So what is okay. NFT, Louise, and how did you enter this space? I will sure. give you the opportunity to share. Like, I know you're the third uh, digital uh, artist, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? For crypto Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah. so let's do definitions, Muna, para yeah. we have uh, context. So NFT is a long acronym that is kind of confusing. The only part that really matters is the T. Part, uh, which means token. Okay. Um, and what that means, because it's a uh, so the token, because parang ano yan, eh? uh, The way that we always try to explain it is, para kang may certificate of ownership in something. Yung token okay. na yon represents ownership in something. Now, what is this something? Technically, anything, right? But mm -hmm. um, the 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 things that we're seeing out there right now are uh, two things uh, primarily. One is artwork. Yeah. So, whether you making token or certificate of ownership in artwork, mm -hmm. or it could be a certificate of ownership in uh, game uh, assets. Uh, so, yeah, uh, in Axie Infinity, the, the axes themselves are NFTs. If it were a different type of game, let's say uh, World of Warcraft. I mean, they don't have NFTs in World of Warcraft, but the yeah. the NFT there could be maybe yung items ng character mo, uh, yung armor niya, yung sword niya, yung weapons niya, things like that. It, that's a possible NFT also. But the whole idea here is that the 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 concept of NFT it is just a certificate of ownership that proves that Ginger actually owns this sword in this game. Uh, Luis actually created this artwork that he is now selling in a marketplace. Um, or and maybe maybe if Ginger really likes Luis's artwork, Ginger buys uh, uh, Luis's artwork. Now the certificate of ownership is no longer with Luis. Now it is with Ginger because she is not the, now the new owner of this thing. So what are the what, what's the what's the purpose of it? Why yeah. why was this even invented? Right. So what has always been missing from the digital world is that although we have a way to make infinite number of copies of the things that we have no so i can make an infinite number of jpegs if i copy yeah. and paste my yeah. artwork right so yeah so that's 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 fine that means i can share it with the world if i wanted to however i need to be able to show at least one of those jpegs is the real uh original edition mm. uh, endorsed by the artist uh, why do i need to do that well because if i don't have that i can't actually sell the artwork in digital form to someone. Because, oh. uh, well, put screenshots lang otherwise, right? Everyone just takes screenshots of the artwork that they like, which is basically how Instagram started. No? Yung parang, yeah. uh, we can just make copies of every visual uh, thing that we like. Eh? It's too easy to do that. But if you are a serious digital artist and you actually yeah. want to sell your work, kailangan merong way na prove na itong particular JPEG na to, this is the, the version or the edition that was uh, endorsed by the artist. And that's why NFTs uh, matter. It finally solved that one problem that digital art has always had. Um, and then, yung technology na yon, yung tokens na yon, they applied it to other places also. So the games, yung, uh, so like with Axie Infinity, uh, those characters, um, the, the axes that you, that you breed there, uh, each one of them is a unique NFT, a unique token. And then yung token na yun, uh, theoretically, pwede mo siyang ilipat outside of Axie Infinity. You can actually put it into another game, theoretically, yeah. assuming that there were other games that supported 
parang yung ganon no, na uh, those types of characters. I mean, we've not seen that yet. That's a very theoretical yeah. use of tokens. But the idea is na yung token na yun actually exists even if the game itself shuts down. You will still see those axes uh, in the in the blockchain no, because uh, this is a, a blockchain technology. Um, so you will see your your purchases uh, live beyond the platform where you bought them. So going back to the art uh, example again, if Ginger bought uh, the NFT of one of my work, yeah. um, even if the gallery or the marketplace website, even if that went out of business, yeah. you would still have that copy and you would still have that certificate na iko yung bumili nun. Um, and that's very important because ano eh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to mimic real life. Eh. Na, you know, pag binili mo yung painting ko, I'm not a real painter. I don't actually, but mm -hmm. uh, don't use paint and brushes yeah. and things like that. Pero if you bought my painting in real life, kasi kahit na wala na yung gallery or yung exhibit or yung museum where you bought it, you still own it. Eh. You still own that painting. So that's what we're trying to mimic in the digital world. And that's why uh, NFTs are so important because finally, there is a way for us to 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 mimic that same uh, style for for ownership. Nice, I love the idea, no? Because like this is a business channel. Like we talk about business, and what I see from what you've mentioned, we're opening up opportunities to a lot of people. Like Axie has opened a lot of opportunities for people to earn money while while playing. And now, like with NFT art, anyone can actually be an artist. Parang ganon yung dating niya, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I uh, know. So the reason why I got very, very into NFT art uh, mm -hmm. was because, uh, well, I actually didn't even realize yung yung uh, overall effect niya. I was kind yeah. of just focusing on the fact that it was nice to be able to sell digital art for once. Um, but uh, I guess yung uh, later on when it became a little bit more popular, what I realized was that like holy shit, like yung the oh. these local artists who could never reach like, yeah. a global audience. Now there's a way for them to show their artwork to more people than are just whoever like are in exactly. Metro Manila, right? I mean, so so a lot of nung na dadagdag niya dun sa network of potential buyers. Uh, so mm -hmm. I I really love that idea. Um, I also like that that I uh, know um, if you don't have to be a painter, you don't have to be a sculptor, you don't have to be parang a traditional artist in order to be as respected uh, yeah. like uh, ako, like my main medium uh, is basically Photoshop no or yeah some other digital drawing program um, but you know like the work that I've been able to sell it's it's sold kind of at the same price as someone whose main medium was oils or watercolors yeah. or something like that so parang same level na siya. Mm -hmm. and that's the first time it's ever been possible. Uh, you know, so that's kind of the art side. I mean, on the on the gaming side, it's even more. Uh, I think it's even more impactful because mm -hmm. this art side, there's few. There's not that many artists in the world. There. I mean, obviously, there's quite a few. But if you compare the number of artists in the world to the number of gamers, gamers in the world, there's <laughs> way more gamers in the world, right? Exactly. So the yung, yung Axie Infinity side, um, that, and Axie Infinity is just one example of this. There's so many examples of yeah. uh, uh, what we call the play to earn uh, phenomenon that's a much 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 larger social impact uh, story yeah. and we're just uh, at, in the beginning of that story where i don't think we're anywhere near mm -hmm. the, even the middle part we're still right at the beginning right now and we're still just learning how to make this stuff like really scalable and sustainable so it's very exciting to watch it so nice. So you're talking about beginnings, no? Let's talk about barriers to entry. Like for Axie Infinity, a lot of people say it's so expensive, right? yeah. Like now yeah. to get a team really like 60 to 100 plus thousand pesos yeah. no? just to get yeah. into the game. Mm -hmm. um, for art, I don't know like how, how do you get into this thing? Because my daughter yesterday, we were talking about NFTs and she created like something, she drew something. She went to me and said, mommy, I want to sell this for one Ethereum. <laughs> I was wow. like, wow. Okay. It took <laughs> me a while to sell my first thing for one Ethereum, I'll tell you that. So Yeah, I know. But but it's so interesting that we, like years from now, our kids, no, the little ones will have this whole new world that we don't know about. No? So like, let's talk about barriers to entry for NFT art. So how hard is it mm -hmm. to get into the game? 
Okay, well, with, so with NFT art, uh, actually, so the barriers are very different now for with NFT yeah. art versus NFT gaming. Ibang iba yung barriers niyan. So let's talk about the art part first. Um, with the art stuff, uh, hindi naman ganon kataas yung uh, amount of money that you have to put into it. It's actually quite um, it's quite reasonable. Um, if you compare, uh, so kunwari, if you are a traditional artist, tapos magbenta ka ng painting mo mm-hmm. through a gallery right now. The galleries charge you thirty yeah. percent for the sale of your painting, no? So if you ch- if you sell something for fifty thousand pesos, that means that that um you're probably going to lose about fifteen thousand from that that sale. So matitira sa mga thirty five or something like that. Yeah, and that's very normal in the traditional space. Um, uh, ngayon in the NFT art space, uh, there's two costs that you have to think about. Okay. The first is the cost that uh, the cost of creating the actual token. And remember that the token kasi is only a representation mm-hmm. of your actual artwork. It is the certificate of ownership. It is not the actual thing that you are okay. selling. No? So that's the first thing. How much does it cost to do that, uh, to create that mm-hmm. token of your artwork? Um, it depends on you know, uh, how busy the Ethereum network is. But generally speaking, somewhere between $50 to $100 yung okay. cost. No? Um, and this is kind of why uh, a lot of... Uh, NFT artists usually medyo mas mataas ng konti yung pricing nila no? usually you won't see an NFT artist sell something for $150 because if it costs oh, them gosh. somewhere from $50 to $100 just to create the token medyo lugi ka ng konti if you only sell it for $150 right okay. kasi ang liit na lang nung kita mo Got not it. to mention not to mention that the uh, NFT marketplaces, the art, w- the marketplaces where you buy the artwork, meron din silang commission. That's not free. Uh, they will also take a commission from that. The range of prices is very, very different depending on which marketplaces we're talking about. Meron mga 1% lang, mm-hmm. uh, meron mga 3%, meron mga 20%. Uh, okay. So that's up to you how you want to navigate that. Which ones do you want to list your artwork in? Typically, if you go with the very expensive ones, the ones that will take 20% commission, mm-hmm. the reason why you're doing that is because they will help you with marketing. Oh, so right. uh, um, they will help you with promoting your artwork. So if you don't know a lot about how to promote your artwork, that 20% is probably going to be uh, worthwhile because you mo benta mo it rather than you go to the marketplace just places na ano uh, kanya kanya na lang sila yung lahat ng artists will just do their own thing yeah so you're not going to get any promotional support mm-hmm. uh, pero uh, 1% lang yung fee nila so it's kind of that's more of a decision that the artist needs to make um, if you are well known maybe you don't need help with promoting your work um, mm-hmm. maybe if you're not not well known even if you don't really have a lot of experience Maybe you need a lot of help with promoting your work. So that's very, very relative to mm-hmm. the, the artist. Na. Yung, I, I, and ano yun, um, when I give advice to people, it's very hard. Like I always say, you know, um, I don't want to make a generalization Correct. about these things because yeah. it's very specific to the artist. And every artist's journey is, is actually quite specific to them. Mm-hmm. Um, with me specifically, the reason why I got into this very early is because um, I was always fixated I mean, I'm a, I'm a cryptocurrency enthusiast. Like, my business is a cryptocurrency exchange. So this is an industry that I'm very, very passionate and actually obsessed with. You know? So I've been doing this for about seven years now. Um, the reason why I got into NFT art is because I was already creating artwork about crypto. Okay. Um, uh, so it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Na, you know, parang... Because my artwork is already about crypto, so I was making cartoons about Bitcoin, I was making cartoons mm-hmm. about Ethereum. That was kind of how I started it. Um, because I was already focusing on uh, the subject matter of cryptocurrencies, it kind of yeah. made sense that the way that I was, I'd sell that art would actually be NFTs because, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. Eh? So, so, yon. so, and that's why my journey is a little strange. Eh? Hindi siya, mm-hmm. I, I didn't come at it from the, the angle of a more traditional artist like i was already a crypto person before i discovered nft art Got so it. so yeah that's that's kind of how my path was mm-hmm. um ngayon, 
uh, with your other question about how about I, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know if you had any follow up questions about the art side. There's kind of a lot going on there, Kasi, yeah. but but generally speaking, um, uh, every artist will kind of have to figure out their own path. Mm -hmm. But uh, yung barriers of entry in terms of money is not high. Yeah. Uh, okay. The barrier of entry is more in terms of recognition. Um, um, parang do you have a, a way to promote yourself? Uh, do you even know how to promote yourself? Yeah. If not, you're going to have a really hard time because uh, there are a lot of digital artists in the world who are now offering their stuff as NFTs. So you need a strategy for, for marketing and promotion. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to be complicated. Like, honestly, my strategy is mostly just to tweet about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, parang social engagement is very important. Uh, usually, sa Twitter, nangyayari yung promotions for NFT yeah, art. Just yeah. because the biggest number of crypto people are in the world tend to be congregated in Twitter. So that's where you want to be. If you're going to push some new art, that's where you want to push. Um, right. Not so much sa Facebook because um, hindi ganun ka-concentrated yung crypto world in Facebook. In Facebook. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so yun, 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 yun yung mga like very basic marketing strategies. But again, uh, it really depends on you. It depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, yeah. So, Louise, sorry, like, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Lang. Like, mm -hmm. for example, for those someone who want to invest, like want to buy art. No? So, yep. how lucrative is this in terms of like investment? Right? And also, mm -hmm. I, I have questions on like, how do you value, like, how do you value a piece that you create? No? So are you yeah. talking about yeah. like, the gas fees and all no? when, when you right. have to sell it already? Sige. Yeah, you so uh, let, me, let me give you a couple of funny stories. I'll give you a couple okay. of funny stories. Now, okay, so when I first started in this space, it, the NFT art space was like 2017. Um, uh, by, in the first year, I probably sold nothing really. I mean, there's not a, a big audience for this stuff, right? It was just interesting. Um, in 2018, uh, I think I might have started selling a little bit here and there. Okay. Now, obviously, this is not the kind of money that you would like. It's not gonna, like I was not rich from my NFT art sales in 2018. No? So, uh, and I'll give you some very specific numbers just yes. to make sure yeah. that everyone understands what I'm talking yeah. about. So I would sell uh, these cartoons that I made. I would do uh, 10 editions or 10 copies of a particular cartoon. Mm -hmm. Each cartoon would, each edition would be uh, 25, somewhere between 25 and, and $50, right? Okay. So Very I'm small amounts of money okay. here. So kahit mabenta ko sila lahat, I'm really <laughs> only making about $200 or something like yeah. that. Assuming na nabenta mo sila lahat. Okay? okay? So here's how I'm going to answer your other question. You were asking about parang the investment side of it. Yes. So, okay, so it's 2018. I sell one edition of one of my cartoons. It's for about $25, $30, something like that. I completely forget about it. Mm -hmm. uh, about a year later, uh, I get a notification that um, the guy who bought it has now resold it to someone else. Right? Okay. There's a big secondary market because for NFT art. Yeah. Now, here's the part that will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. the, the, the guy who bought the it the second time the guy who bought it from my original buyer he paid a thousand dollars for it wow so, so from your <laughs> initial 25, investment twenty five dollars <laughs> naging one thousand dollars yun yung nabalik sa kanya okay. here's the next thing that will blow your mind because it was an nft the artist uh will receive royalties each time it is sold to someone else on the secondary market so, oh, on the secondary okay. market so okay. i got ten percent from that one thousand wow. dollars, so mas malaki pa yung royalty ko kaysa do sa original oh, na binayad niya. Hindi na lang ako ng art, tapos benta na lang niya. <laughs> so so there are definite oh, reasons okay. for doing this stuff, no? So okay. so a uh, uh, you know a, a lot of the speculators, a lot of the investors, what they're trying to do is they're trying to look for artists na up and comers, okay. um, na medyo uh, you know affordable pa yung artwork nila. Mm -hmm. but they have a good chance of appreciating in value over time. Now, in a traditional art world, when we say appreciating in value over time, we mean 10 years, 20 years. Oh, true. But because this is crypto, we mean 6 to 8 months. Wow. You know, like, sobrang ikli ng time of uh, investment yeah. or return on investment. Um, so, so, yun, so that's kind of my story about why people invest in this stuff. 
it is um, it is a kind of a a different way to make a speculative investment. Now you're speculating on talent rather than you know um, in in the more normal cryptocurrency space. Because typically you're making a speculation on the price of Bitcoin, yeah. the price of Ethereum. Uh, yun, ano eh, you're, it's kind of like buying stocks at that point. You're kind of trying to guess which of these uh, cryptocurrencies will become worth more. Um, in the NFT art world, pa siya, but now you're investing in people, right? You're investing right. in yeah. uh, personal brands. Uh, That's why Gary V. Kaya pala si Gary V. Like, may, he made it big because of the branding, because of the people yeah. who follow him. Right. Tinitig ko yung art, medyo hindi naman ganun. Like very basic now. I mean, it's nice mm-hmm. as well now, but mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah, it's not like you know oil paintings that we see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that uh, uh, the the other thing that's really nice about NFT art actually is quite inclusive. Um, you know, like my art style is not. I'm not a not really that kind of painter. No, mm-hmm. I'm not a what you call a fine a fine artist. Not like that. Yeah. No, um, my art is very influenced by comic books. It's very influenced by pop culture. So it's not. It's not like I'm not trying to be Leonardo da Vinci, right? <laughs> um, and, and I think the nice thing about the NFT art space is all of that stuff is um, parang appreciated. So you've got cartoonists, you've got like legit painters, you've got motion graphics designers. So you've got people who are like making 3D animations, and then you've got musicians, right? So so parang there's a much broader market for this stuff. Yeah. Um, and it is a lot more inclusive. The the one caveat is that although it is more inclusive, that means that there's way more people in it, yeah. right? So that that in order for you to actually make money off this, you have to figure out what is unique about yourself, mm-hmm. and you have to uh, push hard uh, to be to be more unique. Because otherwise, hindi ka mapapansin uh, sa dami ng other uh, talent out there, yeah. right? I mean, it's not, like, I don't care so much about the question of, like, are you better or worse than the, right. the talent that's out there? That's not the question, eh, because I think ta- the, the quality of your work is very subjective to the viewer. Exactly. What matters Part, is, yeah. are, you, are you visible? Because, yeah. uh, because that is sometimes more important than, than mm-hmm. anything else. You just need to be very visible. Very good tips, Louise. So, like, if I want to invest now, where do I look for these new up-and-coming artists? Um, okay, so there's a lot. There's a lot of places. Um, I think that um, I always, always recommend OpenSea uh, because that's where you would, uh, that's, the, that's the biggest one. Uh, so that's spelled exactly as I just said it, open, and then C is S-E-A yeah. dot I-O, right? Uh, it is an open sea of, of mm-hmm. art and collectors and all of that stuff. So it's a, it's a very large, it is the largest of the, of the NFT art marketplaces. Yeah. So that's where I would begin. Um, if you are uh, starting to look more uh, up market, um, I guess kind of with uh, artists that are a little bit more well-known na, then you go to places like uh, Maker's Place or Nifty Gateway or okay. things like that. Because you know, man, yung ano, um, these are the artists who um, have some following already. Um, so open sea, because there's no there's no approval process. Like any artist can post on open sea. So in the in Maker's Place and Nifty Gateway, they actually have to approve the artist. So it's very a very exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes months to, to get listed in those uh, marketplaces. And because of that, mm-hmm. the quality of work is generally much, much higher. Because it's just a few of list they have there. But in OpenSea, because it's very inclusive, um, you know, there's, it's a, it's, the, the whole world is yeah. literally putting its artwork yeah. on there. So yun yung, ano, that's what you need to weigh. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, depending on the type of investor you are, it's either or the there's like lots of different uh there's lots of different ways to think about this stuff um the other thing that i will mention is na yung when you talk about making investments in nft art you kind of have to treat it the same way that you make investments in traditional art i think you have to ask yourself first what you like um because you don't necessarily want to just be throwing money at it yeah. Uh, in the hope na mag 30 or 40x yung pera mo no? like in, um it's um 
I would say you don't know kasi for a fact if mangyayari nga talaga yun, di ba? You don't actually know if this artist will will skyrocket over the next couple of years. So I think the first thing you have to ask yourself is do you like this guy's work? Yeah, true. Because, because if you don't and you're just doing it for the money, you might be disappointed if nothing happens, right? Um, so I think that there needs to be a level where you just genuinely enjoy the work of the artist or you are genuinely uh, supportive of, of who that artist is. Um, I'll give you one example. I guess you probably already know this one, but uh, there's uh, this eight-year-old boy, uh, Sevi, who's um, mm-hmm. uh, a painter. Um, he has, uh, I believe he has autism. Um, mm-hmm. So he's uh, he's been, but uh, he uses art as kind of his way to process the world, right? And uh, a lot of his paintings are NFTs. Oh. Uh, he's the youngest member of Crypto Art PH, oh, wow. I'm pretty I sure. Am- uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. So, so I've never actually talked to him. I only talked yeah. to his mom. Uh, I talked to his mom on Twitter. Um, so the your Twitter account is uh, Sevi Loves Art. Um, I, I'll give you the exact link. Yeah. Um, after. Sige, sige, yeah, yeah. Can share it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that's a good story, right? Um, this kid um, is making artwork that helps him uh, understand the world better. Um, and that's the kind of story that you cannot replicate. That is that is very unique to this artist, right? Um, and you know, I mean, he doesn't have to sell um, his paintings. Don't have to be hundreds of thousands of pesos in value. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what's more important is that his story is um, is shared uh, with other people. Um, so, so I think that that's uh, I would I would say that that's a, a good example of. Um, parang supporting an artist because of who the artist is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really look for art that resonates with you, know, or like. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, the world is big, right? The world is yeah. big. There's lots of art out there. Don't just don't just jump in just because you're looking for a no, yeah. return on investment because that might be, that might be. Uh, well, firstly, if you get it wrong, then you're just gonna be annoyed with yourself. At least mm-hmm. with a uh, young strategy of supporting artists you like, you feel good regardless. Yeah. Kahit, or not, right? yeah. um, so 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 yeah, so uh, th- that's how I would do it. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I learned so much about NFT art. No, how about gaming, naman, Louis? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Louis? So I'm sure a lot of people now are like looking into that space as well. Like, mm-hmm. what are what is your like fearless forecast, Sigura, when it comes to NFT gaming with mm-hmm. Axie Infinity like being like now, no, in the forefront yeah. of everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So, a couple of things about uh, play to earn. Uh, so that's what we call this side of the industry, you know, where the gamers can play this game and then they can earn some kind of uh, crypto uh, uh, cryptocurrency by playing this game. So, Axie Infinity is the one that we all know about. Uh, again, this is a, a an early example of this phenomenon. I don't believe it will be the end all and be all of this stuff. I think yeah. that. Uh, it's the big uh, we're already seeing lots and lots of copycats and eventually you'll see um you know the pokemons of the world yeah. entering this space um so i don't think that it's going to be uh parang all are all about axie infinity but for the moment for mm-hmm. the moment it definitely is it's easily the largest of of its type um uh, there's two hundred and fifty thousand filipinos who are already playing it um Last month, they earned the equivalent of you know, um, all of the OFWs who are sending money back I home know, from Hong yeah. Kong, mm-hmm. right? So these are uh, staggering numbers, right? Um, and and be, again, because I own a crypto exchange in the Philippines, I know what those numbers yeah. are like. So I can tell you that the average Axie player uh, in June of this month of this year, um, they uh, they earned about thirty thousand pesos. Uh, from from playing uh, a game, no. right? Yeah, that's the average. So, um, parang I could write a book about all of the other ways that they could have made money that would not have earned that much, mm-hmm. right? I yeah. mean, your minimum wage not is a third of that. Yeah. Um, and and let's not forget that um, you know we're looking at one of the most um, highest unemployment rates. Uh, like this year and the year before, no. But we're looking at you know like real big problems in unemployment across the country, actually across the world. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So the fact that people are suddenly able to do something about it just by staying home and playing a uh, game, that's such a big deal. Eh. Na, na, kahit pa paano nakakita, uh, kumikita ka pa rin, right? Yeah. Uh, and it used to be that we were talking about very small amounts. Back when, back when I first started looking at Axie Infinity, um, they were making something like 4,000 pesos a month, <laughs> which is... Which is already okay, all yeah. things considered, because at least you're making something. What but compared? now it's like, yeah, oh my, and now it's like 30,000. And I'm like, geez, like I'm worried that our team in Bloom will start looking at these numbers and they'll just quit their job, right? Uh, so, so, ganong, ganong level na siya ngayon. I think that uh, it is making us rethink uh, what, what it actually means to be employed, firstly. Yeah. Um, and then, and uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of hype, right? So there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of speculation now, and then because of that, nagtataasan lahat ng mga prices. Um, so the the cost of getting into Axie Infinity is that you actually have to buy the axes before you start playing the game. Yeah. Um, and remember that I said that the, these tokens, kasi um, parang it represents ownership of those actual uh, Axie characters. So, mm-hmm. kailangan mo silang bilhin in order to play it. You need three of them because um, each player has to have at least three, and that's how you duel. Uh, you will battle other players. Mm-hmm. So, it's three Axie characters battling three other Axie characters, and that's how the game works. Unfortunately, when we were starting out uh, a year ago, it was less than a hundred dollars, less than five thousand pesos to get in. Actually, as low as less than a, less than a thousand pesos per mm-hmm. um, Now it's something like a hundred thousand pesos, yeah, which is then, uh, a lot, lot higher. A lot higher, right? yeah. Um, which is a substantial amount of money, and now you're not really helping those people who were unemployed or whatever because it's such a large amount of money. So what is actually happening? Uh, around the Philippines. Well, I mean, now we have scholarship programs, mm-hmm. right? So we have the middle class um, basically uh, loaning the money to these players para, para makabili sila ng team and then nagahati sila dun sa revenue, yeah. right? So that's kind of the, the model by which um, the world, or at least the Philippines, is continuing to play Axie Infinity. Kasi uh, masyado nang mahal yung entry point in order for uh, normal players to get in. Um, and I like to make the, I know, I like to make the comparison to Grab uh, back in mga 2015, 2016, where there were a lot of middle-class households who could get a car loan. So mm-hmm. what they would do is like, they would get a car loan, they would get that second car. That's yung second car na yung nilang Grab. They will, they will hire a driver to yeah. drive this car five times a week, five days a week. And then pag weekends, Voila, they just use it as a second car, right? So, and that was how they were um, parang taking advantage of the grab phenomenon here in the Philippines. Uh, so it's a little bit like that also. Um, you know, middle-class households with a little bit of disposable income, um, they want to have uh, an, a new revenue stream. So what they will do is they'll put 50, 100,000 pesos um, into Axie Infinity. They'll buy their... Axi team, and then they'll uh, 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 lend it to a scholar who will play it, and then, uh, you know, at the end of the month, magahati sila dun sa price. Um, oh, sorry, magahati sila dun sa earnings. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's, I think that that's a very viable model. I actually also don't think that the prices of Axi teams are gonna go down back to the 1,000 or 2,000 peso level for a while mm-hmm. yet, because um, we're, ano eh, um, the, the amount of hype is just so big right now. Yeah. Um, Pero speaking of longevity, Luis, like a lot of people are discussing that right now, the Like mm-hmm. especially those investors who will put in like loads of money into this, buying ten to hundred teams, the for scholarship programs. What what do you see? Like, um, is it gonna stay here for like years to come, or is there a possibility that their one hundred thousand will drop to around like? 10,000, 20,000 pesos? Uh, well, so firstly, mm-hmm. uh, you have to consider that possibility. Yes. Uh, uh, and you have to ask yourself if you are willing to risk the possibility that your 100,000 pesos will suddenly become worth 10,000 pesos. The next day. Oh. This, is crypto- <laughs> this is cryptocurrency. Uh, yeah. And cryptocurrency does that all the time. Yeah. So people are always kind of shocked or stunned when uh, they see the price of Bitcoin now versus the price of Bitcoin a year from now. Because, uh, sorry, a year ago, pala, a year ago, because 
uh, year. Uh, so so right now the price of Bitcoin is thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, One point five million pesos. A year ago it was less than eight thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So four thousand four hundred thousand pesos has suddenly become worth. 1.5 million mm -hmm. pesos, right? So that's yung, yun yung paakyat. But just be, because it goes up that high, it also means that there's a possibility that it could also drop. And and Axie Infinity is a cryptocurrency, no matter what we like to call it, it is still just a cryptocurrency underneath. So it still has a possibility that it could drop mm -hmm. in value. Yeah. So um, when when people ask me, you know, parang about yung longevity mm -hmm. question, um, I will say that it is not possible to forecast these things, but you need to uh, you need to prepare yourself for the possibility where it could happen, and you need to ask yourself, um, you know, if I put in a hundred thousand pesos, and it and over the course of the next few months it suddenly becomes worth ten thousand pesos, yeah, um, am I going to go bankrupt personally if it happens? <laughs> can I can I take a hit? Yeah. of that size because if the answer is no i can't then don't get into it right like there's no i think it's too risky um but if the answer is uh yeah i guess i could uh i could i could survive uh with losing this investment or not not that I'm losing it but you'll lose a very uh, large chunk of it if if the answer to that is yes then i think it's fine uh go go for it right yeah um, but don't ever think that just because um you you understand how the economics of Axie Infinity works that I uh, know that the that it will not drop in price. It, it yeah. it's totally of course it's possible. Yeah. Of course it's possible. This is this is cryptocurrency. I have got I've got at least I know seven years worth of trauma to know. <laughs> na, I know um, anything can happen and it will usually happen in the most inconvenient time. Um, yeah. So so yeah. So you need to be you need to be. Uh, emotionally prepared, financially prepared, um, and uh, you know, um, also understand what your motivations are. So in in my case, I I got into the Axie Infinity thing because it was a really interesting way to learn about a new space, a new corner of the industry, and at the same time, I was also providing money for uh, the Axie scholars. No, so the the players were earning from the investment that I made. Um, and that was kind of nice. Now, but you know, I'm in a um in a directly. I'm actually directly supporting yeah. um, these players. So um, if it turns out na nagamali ako and it turns out na ano lugi pala yung investment, at least I can say that I I put money in the pockets of uh, well, I've got seven teams right now, so I, I put money in the pockets of of seven players. Now at least ano kahit pa paano, I was able to help someone, and I'm pretty sure I was able to help them. Uh, way with way more money than most other occupations would have given them, right? So, yeah. um, so yon. So there's at least that. So there's maybe more societal societal benefit, um, yeah. more than maybe my own personal benefit, and maybe maybe that's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, so that, that's the way I, I like to look at. Yeah, it. I think. Yeah, I think you really have to look at that now from that perspective, and really. Right. So tama kaya very volatile ng ng crypto industry talaga, which leads me right. to my next question. This is like my second to the last question, uh, Luisa. Sure. So, like a lot of uh, people have been talking about like the the unbanked, de ba, for for the longest time, no? So do you think that uh, these things, no, NFT games, a play to earn games, uh, NFT art, is something? Will that be moot? <laughs> No, yung yung pagiging unbank natin hindi nagkakaroon ng bank accounts will that be moot because now instead of like opening bank accounts people are opening metamasks and ronin accounts so yeah. what do you think yep. yeah L look at this part na lang at least we should have options that don't rely on banks yeah um, okay. and i think that uh, cryptocurrency is one of those options I think that uh, play to earn is a way for you to generate value outside of the normal uh, areas yeah. where people expect to be generating value. Um, you don't have to be an employee. You don't have to work in BPO. Right. You don't have to become an OFW. That's a right. Good so yeah. um, I, I think that the most important thing we can do right now is give people options and then just let them decide. So my own personal opinions about banks and stuff like that don't really matter so much. I think it, uh, what matters more is that we have viable options um, where that people can actually use. 
No, so MetaMask is a very complicated little wallet application <laughs> that I kind of wish was simpler, right? Exactly. Um, I I think that a task na barrier of entry for people mm -hmm. who are not tech savvy. That's true. Unfortunately, that's kind of the best that we have right now. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's a way for um, technologists and and other and startups and things like that to make this stuff easier, I think they should. I think they are naman. It's just mm -hmm. taking time. Um, uh, but yeah, I think the most important thing that we can do right now is give people more options. And maybe, maybe, maybe if we're really lucky, it will make these banks realize that they need to um, step up their game in a yeah. way that is more friendly to um, to society yeah. rather than parang, you know, just taking from society, which is yeah. kind of what they're doing. So, so I, um, I, I guess I have a very aggressive opinion about this stuff, but um, mm -hmm. generally speaking, it is better for society to just have more options. And if it's play to earn, if it's cryptocurrency, if it's NFT art, then I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Nice. All right. Thanks, Luis, for that. So I guess for my last question, like any last tips and advice for the viewers who are getting into this? Mm. So I forgot to wear my hat, um, but my so I have a hat that says don't trust, verify. Okay. Uh, and that's basically my motto for the, the cryptocurrency space. No. Yeah. Um, and what that means is, uh, you know, just because you saw a YouTube video of some guy talking very passionately about <laughs> cryptocurrency, NFT art, blockchain gaming, whatever, doesn't mean yeah. you have to take his word for it, right? Um, so do your research, do your homework, try to find out if you can verify all of the things that I'm claiming and, and only put your money in once you have some confidence that you understand some of the things that you're about to spend your money on. Because uh, if you lose your money, there's not a lot of places that you can go to that will help you out, right? Um, pag nawala yung pera mo sa Ethereum blockchain, wala namang customer support yung Ethereum blockchain. Eh. Well, yeah. So you're kind of on your own there. So uh, you need to be careful. Um, I mean, that being said, I, I do... I do believe in the technology, so I don't think that ano naman, I don't think that it's generally bad. I think that it's um, I think that it's just a little complicated for the average person. So again, don't trust, verify, do your own research, um, and then you know, keep an open mind. There's a lot of stuff out there, and um, at the moment, everything is a work in progress. So keep an open mind. Try to stay neutral. Uh, also, stay hydrated. Yo, know, that's it. That's my my last bit of advice for everyone. Thanks, Louis. So the uh, maybe you can share with them like the the things that you're involved with right now, like Bloom X. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the founder of a company called Bloom X. Um, the website is bloomx.app.app. Um, we're still in waitlist, um, but we've got quite a few customers already uh, on the website, and it's the easiest way for you to buy and sell cryptocurrency using pesos in your Gcash or your bank account or whatever. So that's the most straightforward way to do that. Um, if you want to learn more about cryptocurrency in general or you want to keep abreast of the news, I write a newsletter called Crypto Day. Um, and that's uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, I, I publish it. So that's cryptoday.substack.com. Uh, that's it. Thank okay. you so much. I hope Thank you guys found you. that entertaining and yes. informative. Yeah, Luis, I earned a, I learned a lot, no? And we'll put all of the links in the show notes below. So if you guys you. have questions for Luis, just feel free to comment and I will bug him <laughs> if he <you> knows. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> So yeah. there, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining GTV. Bye, everyone. Bye, Luis. Bye.